consider an elephant which has a mass of m sub e and a moment of inertia in the top view around its own center of mass of ie which is a, who is initially at rest on a plate which has mass m sub p and moment of inertia in the top view around its own center of mass of ip which is also initially at rest on a horizontal frictionless surface on the earth's surface the question is, what is the angular frequency and the velocity of the plate for each of the five following cases? Case A, the center of the mass and the elephant, center of the mass of the elephant and the disc are um, coincident at the beginning and um, they stay coincident the entire time. And the, ang the elephant rotates about its own center of mass with the angular frequency WE and this is with, with respect to ground. B, the disc surface is transparent and the elephant stays above a mark, there's a cross here, which is placed on the ground. You can always see it and he stays above it and he's also rotating with angular frequency with respect to the ground in the direction shown. Okay, C, the elef there's a elephant center of mass is connected to a pole and the pole is, is, on, the, is on the plate with an axis which is attached to and rotates with the plate. So there's, a, there's an axis here, the elephant is spinning around again with respect to ground at angular frequency omega sub e, and he's, he's, his center of mass is rigidly attached to a, to a, a, a pole which, which, which is connected directly to the plate. Case D, the elephant walks forward staying on a green circle on the plate, which is a distance d from the center of the mass of the plate. And E, the elephant walks directly away from the center of mass of the plate. So pause the video right now. Uh, I will next show the solutions for all five cases. You can compare those, your solutions to those solutions. And if you get the right answer, great, you're done. If you get a uh, different answer for any of the cases, you can, I'll, I'll describe the solutions for each one of these cases for the rest of this video. The solution for these cases, for cases A, B, and D, the angular frequency of the plate with respect to ground is, and I drew the, this is in the clock, uh, counterclockwise direction for all these, is minus, which means it's actually in the clockwise direction. The moment inertia of the elephant times the angular frequency of the elephant with respect to ground divided by the moment inertia of the, of the plate. And in all those cases, the velocity of the center of mass of the plate is zero. As for case C, the angular frequency of the, uh, the plate with respect to ground, um, I've shown it, drawn it here, here is, is uh, counterclockwise, so it's minus, so it's actually clockwise, and it's uh, moment of inertia of the elephant, angular frequency of the elephant ground, divided by um, this quantity here, mass of the elephant. I've defined Re, as the distance between the center of the mass and the elephant and the center mass of the system, which in the system is the plate uh, um, elephant system, um, plus the moment inertia of the plate with respect to its center in, the, in this view right here, plus the uh, mass of the plate, and when R sub P is shown as the distance from the center mass of the plate to the center mass of the system. So that's the solution for C, and then the magnitude of the center mass velocity of the plate with respect to ground for KC is this RP times this quantity here. And for case E, uh, there is no angular frequency uh, of the plate with respect to ground, but the velocity of the plate with respect to ground is the velocity of the elephant with respect to ground times the mass of the elephant divided by the mass of the plate, and it's in this velocity is in the opposite direction of the um, of the velocity of the elephant. And uh, got that great, you understand it. If you didn't, um, you think about the, what's happening in the system. If I pick my system to be the plate in the elephant and it's on a frictionless flat surface, and I'm assuming there's no forces acting on this, well, I'll, for momentum, I know that the change in momentum is over t dt is f net on the system. 
There are no net forces on the system that I've chosen, so therefore um, that, that uh, the momentum in all vectorial directions is going to be constant. And since I was told at the start of time, uh, everything's initially at rest. So initially, it's, at, at, it's the momentum is, is has in each vectorial direction is zero. So therefore, it, finally, I'll, at, at any t t time, I, vectorially, I'll have no momentum in any direction. Um, and then for a system that's um, uh, free to rotate, is not fixed on an axis, a good place to do angular frequency, uh, angular momentum about would be the center of the mass of the system. And so we'll pick the, the change in angular mass of the system around the center of mass of the entire system with respect to time. There's no net torques acting on this. There's no, there's no force um, coming at, acting on it, which is not going through from the outside world, not going through the center of mass, which would create a torque. If the, if an outside force is going through the center of mass, and it just creates a, a force. But if it, in the vectorial direction of this outside force is not through the center of the mass of the system, then it would be a torque. But there is no such thing. So there's no net torque onto the system. So therefore, this is zero. So the derivative is zero. Therefore, this um, angular frequency, assume angular momentum term around the center of the mass is constant in all vectorial directions. And since it's zero at the start of time, it's also going to be zero for all times. Um, so with this insight now, if you didn't get that right, um, pause the video and solve for the problems that you, that you um, the, the cases you didn't get right, and then let's, we'll start up again. And I'll detail each one of the cases individually. Solving this problem now, I want to pick a coordinate system, which is an inertial coordinate system, which means it's either not moving at all or translating at a constant velocity. So I'll, I'll pick my coordinate system and I'll pick one which is coincident with the center point of, this, of the center of mass of this system. That'll make the problem easier to solve. And I'll have the x and y and the z direction will be out for me, so it's a, a coordinate system follows the right-hand rule. Now I have my coordinate system picked, and if, let's say, let's say for example this elephant and the plate were on a, on a train, so they were on a train and they were all going constant velocity to the side. That would also be an initial co a, a coordinate system which I could use and have the coordinate system going along on the, on the bed of the train. So that's, an, that's a valid one as well. But here it's even simpler because it's fixed to the ground. We'll assume the Earth is an initial uh, inertial coordinate system. Pick my coordinate system now, and as we mentioned before, from since there's no net forces on here, and from, from system momentum, since there are no net forces acting in any vectorial direction, and since the initial velocity, the center of mass, the system is zero, then the position of the center of mass, the system does not change. So that's a given for all of them. No net forces acting on it. Um, the velocity of the center of mass doesn't change. The velocity of time zero is zero. Therefore, velocity of center of mass is always going to be zero for, for, from, from now to till a force acts on it. And there is no force acting on it right now. So that's going to be helpful to when solving the problem is, is a problem that has no net forces on it and not moving, center of mass stays in the same place. Now from system angular momentum, since there's no net, no, we have to, angular momentum means angular momentum about a point. So you have to pick a point. If something is rotating about some axis, for example, if this is not this problem, let's say there's an axis here and this whole thing was going around there, you typically pick that axis point of center rotation to be the point you go around, because that makes the problem simpler to solve. For this case, though, um, we have no fixed point, so the best point, and the problem makes it much easier, is to pick the center of the mass. If there's no fixed axis, pick the center of the mass of the system and do the net torque of the system around that center of mass. And we're told that's zero, so from angular momentum, we know that the um, angular momentum uh, doesn't change, so the angular momentum of the elephant plunger around the center of system mass, the center of mass system, in, in, around this um, z, um, in the z direction, initially those two summed up and those were zero. We were told those were both zero. And therefore we know at any later time the sum of those two will also be zero. It doesn't mean these individual terms are zero, it just means the sum of them must be zero. So 
angular momentum has to be around a point. It's the center of the mass of the system. It has to be in a direction we'll call in this around the z direction because everything's happening in this one plane. Things are rotating in this plane and in the final state. So what does that mean? A angular momentum has two components. So here, let's think about the elephant. So the elephant, he has a potential, the elephant, if he's not a particle and he's spinning, then he, and he's spinning around, then he will have a rotational component about his own center of mass in, in the z direction at the end. So this is the thing in the part not as a particle, but as something which has its own moment of inertia rotating its about its own center of mass. So there's no subscript here, rotation about its own center of mass. So that's the first part of any particle's angular momentum in a vector direction. The other part is the translational component. So in this part, think of the elephant as condensed down to a, to a particle which is located at his center of mass. So, so synchrotron center of mass, now you get translation relative to some point, and it's not relative to his own center of mass of time, but it's, we're going to do it relative to the center of mass of the system in the z direction finally. So that's translational here of the elephant, and the same things would be true then we, uh, the other part is the plate has this rotational angle momentum, the plate has some moment of inertia about its own center, and the plates can be con thought of condensed down to um, its own mass at its own center of mass, and potentially it has a translational term because it maybe has some velocity relative to, this, to the other point I'm picking, which is center mass of the system. And now, um, just blowing this term up here, the, the translational angular momentum of the elephant about the center of the mass of the system in the z direction finally is r cross p. Well, what's r mean? r means the vector going from the center of the mass of the system, what I've chosen, to the center of the mass of the elephant, because the elephant's now condensed down to a point, cross the momentum of the center of the mass of the elephant. And so here's r, we know p, uh, uh, it's gamma m, the velocity, uh, we'll assume gamma typically is, is 1, with, with, with typical speeds being much less than the speed of light in a vacuum. Okay, so, and then, uh, so we can ultimately get this down to the mass of the elephant times r cross v, where r is the vector from the center of the mass of the system, what I'm trying to go about, to the center of the mass of, the, of this particle, the elephant, cross, so it'd be a, you use the, the sine of theta, the angle between them, um, the uh, velocity of the center of the mass of the elephant with respect to the, the velocity of, this, of the system. And we're gonna, and since it's all planar, we're gonna do everything in the z direction. Solving for a, we're gonna use this equation. Matter of fact, we're gonna use that for every single one of them. We're gonna look at individual elements. We're gonna only consider it in the z direction, and I'm gonna use the right-hand rule, cause that positive z. So let's start this first term, angular momentum of the elephant about its own center of mass. Um, so the elephant has its moment of inertia about its own center of mass. Um, I sub e, and that's a, so this is IE times the angular frequency of the elephant with respect to the ground. Translational. So translational is now the elephant condensed down to a part, to a, to a particle at its own center of mass. And what's the velocity of that center of the mass? And what's relative to the center of the mass of the system? It's zero. Also, the, the, the distance, the vector from the center of the mass to the center of mass of the elephant, for this case, is also zero. For multiple key reasons, this is zero. Now, for the plate, I've again drawn the angular frequency of the plate in the positive direction. So, this first term here, rotational angular momentum of the plate about its own center of the mass, where the plate is considered to have a moment of inertia. So, that would be its moment of inertia times its angular frequency. And then translational, just like the elephant, since the, um, the center of the mass of the elephant, of the plate, and the center of the mass of the system remain coincident, both the r and the velocity terms will be, will be zero. So that's zero. So I have this, and there's my entire angular momentum equation. And I can solve for the angular momentum of the plate with respect to the ground. It turns out to be minus, which means it's actually, it's turning clockwise. You kind of expect it, if this one's turning counterclockwise, that one's gonna be turning 
clockwise. So this, so this angular momentum term sums up to really to be zero. And his, it, here's the magnitude. For case B, we were told that the elephant's center of mass was, was remained at the same uh, place above the ground. So he had, the elephant had no velocity with respect to the ground. So his center of mass always stayed there. And since we know the center of the mass of the system can't change because there's no net forces, therefore we know that the center of the mass of the plate has to stay in the same place. Um, so you just think of that, or you can think about momentum. We know that momentum the, is telling us that no, there was no momentum at the beginning, no momentum at the end. So in the, any state, the mass, the momentum of the elephant is the mass of the elephant times the velocity of the elephant, which, which is vector ground. And the momentum of the plate is the mass of the plate times the velocity of the plate, which is respect to ground. And since we were told that this one is, goes to zero, which means this term is zero, therefore the velocity of the plate must also be zero. So momentum would tell you the same thing if it was just, just an obvious as far as, far as that, the, that these center masses are staying in the same place. And since their center masses are staying in the same place with respect to ground, then, they, then they, the center masses have no velocity with respect to the center mass of system. And so when I put it into this same equation here for case B, Again, the, we put their xy coordinate system uh, located at an inertial coordinate system at the center of the mass of the system. And we're going to do, in the z direction, the angular momentum terms, rotation of the elephant with, with respect to its own center of mass. It's rotating here. So that's the term for that term. Um, and we have no translation because we were said the velocity of this now contends down to a to particle at a center of mass that has no velocity relative to the center of the mass and also no r, so that's zero. Uh, now for the plate, the plate can be rotating. Again, I, I, put, I put the positive uh, angular frequency direction on it. Um, and so what's the angular, so this using this one here, rotation of the plate, but its own center of mass, that's the i of the plate. Uh, times the angular frequency of the plate with respect to ground. Uh, again, the plate has no velocity term, so the translational of, of the center of the mass of the plate is zero. So that's zero, and I, and I solve, and I get the exact same thing I got for case B. Um, just another comment on it. Uh, so I, I, I define where the center of the mass of the system is. Um, the, the center of mass of the system has to be between the two center of the mass of the system. I only have two two elephant systems, so it's going to be between the two. And if the elephant was very heavy, it'd be closer to the elephant. And if the elephant was very light, it'd be closer to the, to, to the disc. And just doing, one could do the torques around the, the x-axis um, to find that this uh, relation, so I can find the distance from uh, the center of the mass of the system to the center of the mass of the um, plate, or also the distance from the center of the mass of the elephant the center mass of the plate is, is this, and also I, I know that, um, I would know that, you know, D equals RE plus RP. So using all this, I, I, can, I, can, I can figure out where that center of the mass of the system is. For case C, the elephant center mass is rigidly attached to the um, plate, and he can spin around, but he's going to move with the plate. We're going to again look at find our coordinate system at the center of mass of the system, and we can find our center of mass of the system using these equations, um, where R e is the distance of the elephant to the center of the mass, and R p is the distance from the uh, plate to the center of the mass. And the elephant's going to spin in this direction with respect to ground. I mean, if it's some time problem, it's just easier to say well, I, I know the plate's got to be going this way because if I have some things. The net zero and something spinning this way, something the everything else will be spinning this way. So for this case, I'm going to draw it this way, and now um, it's very helpful for me to when I'm thinking about things moving, not to draw this as a circle, but draw something which is an orientation. So I'm going to draw it here as this orientation, and then think about it at some other time later. I've now drawn the plate as if it's rotated 45 degrees around, and we know that the center of the mass of the system has to stay the same, and the, uh, here are the plates on this side of the center of the mass of the system, and here's there. And so we know that as this rotates, center of mass, so that, that's going to be fixed. So essentially the plate is rotating around the center of mass of the system. So this, this distance, um, our plate there, has to be the same distance from our plate from there to there. 
So that spins around there. So it's spinning in a circle around the center of the mass. And same thing, and because the elephant's attached to the plate, he's spinning or also spinning around the center of the mass of the system. I've now drawn it so that the plate has rotated 90 degrees, revolved around, and when it's doing that, the center of the mass of the plate is going to be staying at a constant distance r sub p away from the center of the mass of the system. So the plate's going to rotate there, and so in this condition, the plate's over there, the elephant is now, he's here, and the center mass is there, and so that the distance r, this is rp away from this, the center of the mass, and the elephant is re away from the center of that, and so the um, center of the mass of the plate revolves around. When the plate does one full revolution, the center of the mass will come back up to here. And the elephant is spinning at, he's, he's attached to the plate, so he's going to be spinning at the same angular frequency as the plate, and he'll just be spinning around, he'll be spinning around at his, his distance r sub b. And since in this way I've drawn it, I've said the elephant's more heavier than the plate, r sub e would be smaller radius than r sub p. If the elephant were lighter than the plate, then r sub e would be greater than r sub p. So now you kind of thought of the, how everything's rotate, we can start solving. Solving using angular momentum. So the first one is the, the rotational angular momentum of the elephant around its own center. And we were told that, um, he has, that the elephant's spinning around at um, angular frequency, mega sub e with swift trick around, he's spinning in the in the positive in this in the counterclockwise direction, which is positive. So there's the first term. Okay, now the second term, the translational. Now the elephant now considered to be a particle, and we're going to look at it as translational angular momentum about the center of the mass of the system, which is here. That's the point we picked, and uh, finally. And we know that's r cross p, where r goes from the center of the mass of the system here to the center of the mass of the elephant. So r, r as a vector at this moment of time is pointed downward, cross t t times the mass times the velocity of the center of the mass of the elephant, which here at this point of time, he's the, the, the elephant's spinning around in a circle around the uh, plate, so at this moment of time the elephant's going this way. So the elephant center of mass with respect to the center of mass of the system is this there. So because I said this is the this is the rotational direction I'm going. So if I go R cross V, you can see that's a vector into the board. Okay? And I was gonna I'm defining I'm defining in the in the Z direction, defining this to be positive. So so the elephant's rotation, he's, 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 a, he's a positive counterclockwise. So this term, R, this term right here is negative into the board. Now, uh, so we finished with the, the, this term. Now looking at the rotational term of the plate. So that's the, the plates we're saying is going to spin. That's we're going to put W this way. It's so spinning this way. Um, so that's going to be in the negative direction as we defi we're defining it. So minus the moment of inertia of the plate around its own center times the, the angular frequency of the plate with respect to ground. And now taking the plate and condensing it down to a particle at its center of mass. So the center of mass of the plate is right here at that time. Um, we're going to have R, which is going from the center of the mass of the system to the center of mass of the plate. So R is in this direction um, times so the, mass of the, the mass of the plate times the R time cross the, the center of the mass of the, the, the velocity of the center of the mass of the plate, which is in this direction because the plate's spinning around in this, around this way. That's, that's the omega direction. So R cross V. Is, into, is negative into the board. So spinning. So um, we have the elephant spinning this way, making this way. His run is spinning around, his, rotating around his own central axis, um, and the, all the other velocity components end up being negatives.
Now thinking about velocities here, the, start with the plate. The velocity of the plate is, we know the plate's spinning at uh, angular frequency omega p is with the ground, and it's spinning around the center with r sub p, so the velocity of the plate with respect to ground, or the center of the mass, is rp times angular frequency of the, of the plate with respect to ground. With the elephant, the elephant also is rigidly is his center of mass is rigidly attached to the plate, so he's not he's spinning at that his center of mass when you think of one as a particle is also spinning at that angular frequency. So his velocity is the the radius of the of the elephant from the distance from here to the center of mass to the elephant. So the radius of that circle to also times the angular frequency of this plate because he's attached to it. So now substituting in, in for these two terms, I, I get this. And then so, then I, I have three terms over here that has the angular frequency of the plate was switched to ground. And doing the algebra, I can find this answer. So moment of inertia of the elephant times the angular frequency of the elephant with respect to ground um, divided by these terms right here. And um, this is positive in this case because when I, I, I define it this way. So positive this way, if it had done this, if it looked, if it negative, negative in the other way, it would have been negative. And then as far as the velocity, so what, what's everything about the, the velocity of the plate? Well, the velocity of the plate, the center of the mass of the plate is this term right here. So it's the, the radius, the dis distance from the center of mass of the system to the center of the mass of the plate times this term right here. Thinking about case E, if the elephant's going to walk around this circle right here, he's going to take a step in this direction, and so he's going to be rotating this way, so it's very likely that the disc could be rotating this way. And so if the disc could maybe be rotating that way, you'd think, okay, so I'll, I'll stop and let's draw the disc rotated and think about it for a second. So if the disc rotated this way, just the rotation of that disc would, would make this point want to go this direction. And if the elephant, you think he's going this direction, you might end up thinking they're going to end up there. But that's impossible because then both of the parts had moved to the right and the center of mass would have also moved to the right. But that we know that the center of mass has to stay in the same place. So what else must happen besides this rotating? Well, you can think about the force between the elephant and the plate is the elephant wants to go forward this way. He has to, he has to put a force on the plate to, to do that, and the force on the plate is going in this direction. So you can think about it, so this plate is, rot is rotating, but then also this force making it go this direction would make the plate slide back over this way. And having him walk this way and the plate slides this way means that the center of the mass of the plate really just remains at the place it was before. And if the center of the mass of the plate remains at the place it was before, the center of the mass of the elephant just remains what was before. And all that happens is the elephant is rotating this way and the plate is rotating that way. And when that happens, then just like in case B, the, the elephant will make a circle around the center of the mass of the plate. And as the plate rotates, the elephant will be rotating around his center. So essentially the, the plate is going to be rotating about its own center of mass, and the elephant will be rotating around his own center of mass. So no trans so neither of the center of the masses have any translation, they just have rotation. So so essentially so essentially when thinking about uh, angular momentum, all we're gonna have is rotational terms. There's no translation of these because they can't translate because they need to the center of the mass of the system needs to to, to stay in the same spot. So this becomes our rotational component of the of the elephant. Um, I, I, I drew this um, 
And since now I call, I'm going to call this negative, so this would become a negative. So this translation is positive, this translation is negative, and so this is zero. And solving for rotational angular momentum of the, of the plate, which we have to ground, where I'm going to call this the direction that's occurring, so that would be this direction. And so if compared to this one where I call that positive, this would be a negative then. So it turns out that B and D are the exact same thing happening. For case E, we're told the elephant walks directly away from the center of the mass of the plate. And since the, the, center, the center of the mass of the elephant, center of the mass of the system, and the center of the mass of the plate are all in alignment, there's no reason for anything to to rotate, so therefore the um, angular frequency of the plate with switch to ground is zero, and so we have to have some momentum terms, and we know that the momentum initially was zero, and so the momentum of the system will be constant and will be zero at all time. So looking in the positive y direction, momentum is mass times velocity, so momentum of this is its mass times its velocity with respect to ground. The momentum of the elephant, this is the minus y direction, is here, so we can solve for the velocity of the plate with respect to the ground, and we can see it's this term right here.